So it's streaming right now, so no profanity, please. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, hey, watch your Astronaut. And again, if you guys don't want to sit in the back, back, you're welcome to move forward. It's open seating, it's open everything. Uh, you have to pee and you can. Stop it. Stop it. Don't worry. Can you table? Can you table? Can you table? Seven years ago, or, my grandfather passed away. Oh, yeah. We were really close, but it wasn't like it was like a couple of tears. It was like the silent tears. Yeah, it was like the the, 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 silent, depressed, man, the depressed couple tears that come. Yeah. Out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
story. I was just, I really like my Keurig, okay? Just showing the Keurig so much. Oh my gosh. Huh? Well, like, it's a bunch of people. I don't know what you said. We're going to ask those classes. Oh, All right. Uh, we're gonna uh, get started. It's four, so. Um, just so we can. Uh, oh wait, this camera can't see me. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, I want to go home eventually. So, um, no, oh gosh, okay. 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 okay, on uh, on this stuff, real quick, I want to I want to give you some clues if you want them. Uh, on uh, this will be multiple choice. I am telling you that. I shouldn't even tell you this. Um, I did alter the test during my prep today, and I I made it two more multiple choice, and I got rid of Beer's Law. Okay, now, I the reason I got rid of Beer's Law is I, I realized I already tested you on it. Um, oh, yeah. So, and it was in two labs, and... <clears throat> I, I got it. I had to cut it somewhere, otherwise the test was too lengthy for the time we had, the way I had written it originally for this year. And so, um, I basically I use the AP rule of thumb on on how to write the test, which is give them about a minute and a half for multiple choice, and then whatever the short answer questions would break down to, give them that amount of time. So, um, so that's that. I want to let you know that there are now it's fourteen multiple choice and four short answer and they're not long short answer questions they're like little pieces of short answer questions okay so um the uh on this stuff okay a couple of things you want to know let me let me ask you this now we talked about one of them already but where is it at its uh lowest potential energy yeah how come it's the lowest of the temperatures Okay, so it has the lowest of the potential energies on this one. Um, so then uh, we look at this guy. Wait, did we already answer? Wait a minute, I'm sorry, this is the wrong slide. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Did I change this one? No, you're right, it's the other one. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry guys, I screwed that up. I, I read the question wrong. D? Yeah, so it's going to be D. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, just hang on. It's in the note. Oh, you answered it. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was, I was reading it wrong. Um, so the highest potential energy would be A. The lowest would be D. Now, here's what we mean by that. If you look at the equation there, the energy total equals kinetic plus potential. So if I take WP and hold them up here, that's the highest potential energy I can get him because of my height and my, the length of my arm. Okay. As I, if I drop him, as he starts to fall, what happens to the potential energy? It decreases, it decreases and his kinetic Increase. increases, but the total energy stays the same because what you learned in first year chem was energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be Transfer. transferred. Okay. So with the mechanics of this guy falling, it's going from a lot of potential energy to less and less and less, more kinetic, more kinetic, more kinetic. Okay. Yeah. So the higher it's the, the higher the potential energy. Yeah. Because it's going up higher. It's got, you can, if that helps you remember it, it's you can think of it like holding WP way up here. He's got a lot of potential energy. So, because it's, it's like a roller coaster. So, like a big roller coaster. You're going you have a lot of potential at the top. And you, you cover some of that stuff probably in middle school. So, it really works the same for this stuff. Okay. What you want to remember is a graph like this is showing you the same substance at different temperatures, okay? And at the very end of the period today, we mentioned at D, it would be at its highest kinetic energy, which is the highest temperature, okay? Kinetic energy is temperature, the average of it, okay? So A would be a really low temperature, D would be really high temperature for the same substance, whatever gas we're talking about here, or whatever substance we're talking about, okay? Doesn't have to be a gas either, it could be anything. 
So the higher it is, the lower the temperature. Yeah. And and with the with D, when you guys look at the high temperature one D, what you got to realize is, at a higher temperature, you have more molecules that have more energy than you do at lower temperatures. So the spread gets bigger because more of them have the chance of being at the higher temperature. Higher temperature means bigger chances of getting different temperatures, really, which is why it's so spread out. Um, so they're all at the same total energy, all these graphs, but their differences come in which one is which ones have more potential or which ones have more kinetic energy. Okay. Yeah. Is this the Maxwell Boltzmann? This is a back Max Maxwell Boltzmann, Maxwell Boltzmann diagram, yes. And since you're here, that's the one you're going to get on the test. This exact one? Uh-huh. Thank you. I already asked you the two questions you'll see on the test. Okay. If you, if you didn't catch, no, no, on purpose. You're here. It's being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> You'd probably be able to construct the test, question by question, just by watching. Next year is pretty easy ish. Five is actually not bad. Um, five short, too. Um, where you guys will start hitting this class again is. Yeah, so so. we already, I think, we've been there, and we just keep going up. Yep. Keeps getting worse. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, so I would really go through those notes on that CAMT. I mean, it's only two multiple choice questions, but remember, there's only 18 questions on the test. 14 points out of the 25 is multiple choice. You want to get them right. Okay. So play the odds there and get this stuff right. Um, the... Uh, 3.6 is the deviations from ideal. Now, um, you got to remember what caused. Hey, what's up? We just got started. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The last one this is B because one has the highest kinetic energy. It had the lowest potential, which means it has the highest kinetic. Yeah, and that's kinetic. But it says it says what has the lowest kinetic energy. So it's like D, and it's just kinetic. If it says explain, you're not going to have to do that on the test because it's multiple choice. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, do I get product placement if they see the Chobani flip thing in no. the video? Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> no, you're good. It's a uh, Chobani dump. No. Then you might be fine. That's what my colleague, Miss Harper, calls them. Because you're dumping this stuff into the other, her niece calls it that, and I, her eight-year-old niece or whatever, I don't know how old the kid is, but like, yeah, it makes sense. All right. But it's really, I mean, I'm just dumping this stuff in. I mean, yeah. all right. Um. So the ideal gas law. Remember with KMT, the ideal gas law. We the big things on KMT are. They don't have their own volume, the particles, and they don't, we consider them not attracted to each other. Okay. So ideal gases are not real, but it's useful to consider them because it makes the math easier. Okay. So PV equals NRT is easy to use because we're ignoring the volume of the particles themselves and the attraction between the particles. Once that comes into play, it takes us out of the ideal. So uh, low temperatures and high pressures can cause more deviation. So if we, we looked at this in class, but just to remind you, since, I mean, we are reviewing. Um, I guess we can talk about it. The, uh, let's imagine a gas, doesn't matter what it is. In this container, we take the same gas amount of particles and put it in this container. Why does the volume of the particles matter more in container B than A? If you think about subtracting out the volumes from this one versus subtracting out the volumes from this one of each of those particles, which one's going to take a bigger hit in volume change? Yeah, because those particles are in a spot that's less space. So that's one thing. 
The other thing is, and we're saying this is higher pressure because the volume's low. Okay, so this would be lower pressure because the volume's higher. Okay, and uh, that's Boyle's law. Pressure and volume are inverse. Okay, yeah. Can we also say that the particles make up more of the volume? Yeah. The yeah, exactly. If and that's that's what we're trying to get across is they are. They're representing more of that total volume. Now, this is an over exaggeration of particle size to show the difference. This is why it doesn't really make that much of a difference, because in reality, if I had a container that size with gas like helium, you'd never see those atoms. Okay. They're too small. Yeah. So we're really we're exaggerating it here to show the difference. Um so that's one thing. And then lower temperatures, remember, gets them closer together, which means the attractions are going to be more intense between them. As these guys get closer together, they get more attracted to each other. So even in a helium atom, I'm just going to do the Bohr model. If two of those guys get near each other, they both have two electrons, so they're happy. But sometimes the two electrons are both over there for a split second, which makes it more negative on that side, which means that side is more positive and then if these guys see electrons they run to the other side which makes them negative over there and positive there and you get a slight LDF just for a second but helium's a gas it almost I mean every temperature I mean it's really hard to get helium to a liquid because of that so it's got really weak attractions but um you know as the pressure increases on helium and the temperature drops you can get it closer and closer to condensing Okay. Some gases are easier if it's got really high attractions like water. To get water to condense is really easy. I can just put a glass of ice water on the table and the water in the air will immediately condense on the outside of the glass because it's cold. And water, when it turns cold, turns liquid. Okay. Um, if the glass is cold enough, I can get that water to turn to ice yeah, on the outside, which will happen if you put a mug in the freezer. My father-in-law is German, and uh, they like uh, they like this alcoholic beverage that starts with a B and ends with the ear and uh, bear. So yeah, it's bear. And uh, that he likes the mug in the freezer, and the water in the air will freeze on the outside of it, and even form a frost of ice. And then when he pulls it out and pours the beer in there, it's nice and cool. You can do that. We do that with root beer when we were kids. Get a glass mug and do that. So yeah, that. Whenever you cool things down, they get more attracted to each other. They go liquid and then eventually solid. Okay. The other thing that causes more deviation is intermolecular forces of attraction. Okay. So if those get higher, these gases deviate more from the ideal because that draws them closer together, which is bad because their volume starts to matter more and their attractions for each other start to matter more. Okay. So that's really where the, the deviations come from. But again, the deviations are so slight between most gases that we can still get away with PV equals NRT and be pretty close in our calculations, okay? To the point where we don't even correct Ford and AP Chem anymore. It's like it's not that big of a difference in answers. The answers are usually pretty close, okay? So why talk about it at all? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because they want you to know the concept of it without having to do the calculations to prove it. Um, because if you should go take more chem or major in chem, you will start calculating. I'm just saying you would start calculating for ideal. But you've already seen the equation. It's not like you I've had students do it before when we used to have to do it. They didn't look at it and go, oh, this is impossible. They actually didn't care. They knew how to do the math. It's algebra. So uh, not a big deal. So it says, uh, which of these would deviate the most from ideal conditions and all are at the same temperature and pressure? So the only difference now is going to be what? <clears throat> well, look at the first two bullets. The temp and the pressure are the same for all of these. So what's going to be different? The IMF. What IMF is in all of these? Yeah, London dispersion forces. So which of those would deviate the most, meaning which would be attracted to itself the most? How come? Has the most electrons. So C, uh, propane, would be the one that, I, that deviates the most because it has the most electrons in it. Okay. 
So that uh, that is the type of quest. That's multiple choice on the class, by the way. For those that are here, it's multiple choice. Not the exact question. But something very very similar. If you can answer that, you'll be good. Okay. Yeah. Great. Goodish. Yeah. You'll survive. You'll make it. This is three point six. Okay. This student pick. Yeah. Um. Please, you don't watch it. You don't have it. Oh shit. <laughs> I was going to look for it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, however you want. I'll make sure you get a five on me. Okay. Like I have any pool. <laughs> How long is it? It's, uh... Should I make this a classroom or a stream? Because these are... Make it a stream. No, 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 no. Okay, you get a notification on the stream? So I have former students that have been watching these feeds. They're in college taking chem and they started watching the feed. I was like using it to study. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Uh, no, okay, it's, it's How do you get the links? How do they get the links? Uh, they follow my channel. <laughs> so, like, they'll get a thing saying, oh, there's a more caring video about it. I know, who subscribes to a teacher? You have a following. Okay. Following. Uh, all right, uh, a couple things. Um... Oh, this, this one's tough. This is good. Um, if I take a glass of water out of one of these faucets, uh, is that a compound or a mixture? If I get a glass of water out of that faucet. It's a mixture. Yeah, why is it a mixture? There's minerals in the water that we... It's not pure, yeah. Uh, Guys, if you want pure water, go to Save Mart and buy distilled water. That is pure, but it doesn't taste as good. So it's, yeah. So water out of the faucet is a homogeneous mixture, okay? It should all be homogeneous. If it's not, don't drink it, okay? There's dirt in it or something, ERP, yeah. Is that the reason why you always say something whenever you get tap water for the Yeah. It's like so. Like, look, guys, it's distilled water. Yeah, and then I just pull it right out of the tap, and then whatever. <laughs> it's messed up all of your results, but whatever. Uh, it's experimental error. So, but yeah, well, because we should have done it with the sill water, we did it with that. That gives us experimental error for the lab. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we we will. Some of them we have to use distilled to get it to work, right? So don't worry, we will we will use it. There's somewhere I'm like it doesn't matter. When when you're using a spectrometer. If you set tap water as the baseline, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, I don't think it matters. Uh, if anybody's watching this that doesn't know me, correct me if, if it does matter, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So. <laughs> You're wrong. I have like two viewers. Can you, can you give me a heterogeneous mixture? Heterosalad. Salad? Salad? This Chobani flip? Sure. Yeah. Oh, um, it is uh, because I've got almonds in there and coconut and right. Yeah, what uh, Ariana said. It, Ariana said was really good. It's you can see the the difference up. You can see a differentiation in the makeup of the stuff. Chocolate chip ice cream. Um, all all of those are heterogeneous. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Okay, so. When was I going to go get ice cream? At lunch. I got done at 3.40. At lunch. 
Yeah. You bring ice cream next time to the play session, I'll bring you Taco Bell. Chicken. Oh, I don't want the food. Yeah. I'll bring you the treat. Sorry. I I'll bring you a larger the yeah. treat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in faucet water, what is the solvent? Solvent? What? H2O. What is the salt, or what are some of the solutes? The Lord only knows what's in there. The yeah. So, so uh, yeah, for tap water, there's calcium ions in there. There's all kinds of things dissolved in it. Um, if you have a water source that's not particularly clean, then it could be anything. Uh, we had, when uh, we deepened our well last year during the lockdown um we had a guy coming in deep in the well and our water was yellow for like three months well so i brought it in and i had tommy with me here at school and we brought it in and we did a precipitate test on it so i added silver uh, nitrate to it and we got a white cloud forming in there so that didn't really tell me anything except there's probably chloride ions in it and it made silver chloride um but eventually we got the water tested and there was nothing bad. It was just the silt from the well was so fine. Like I tried to boil it out and it, I got the water boiled out and the silt was making it darker and darker as I boiled the water away and got it to like a yellow brown color. And we realized it was just dirt, but it's real like, like fine, fine dirt in there. So eventually it cleared itself out, but that, that was not even, I mean, it was homogeneous, I guess, because uh, the particles were suspended in the water and it all looked like yellow, light yellow colored. So, and that was with a filter on the water supply. Yeah, it was small enough to make it through the refrigerator filter. So, um, so yeah, solute versus solute is what's being dissolved into the solution. The solvent is what's doing the dissolving. Okay. Uh, the molarity equation is given to you on the equation sheet that you get. But just remember that molarity equals moles over liters, okay? So if you're ever given grams to get molarity, you need to convert it to moles. If you're given milliliters, convert it to liters, okay, for that. But generally, that just to get those, usually they'll say, hey, I've got 20 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in one liter of solution. You're gonna to have to convert that 20 grams to moles and then divide it. Okay. Yeah. So why do we need this equation? To do just that. So it's really just you need to understand that it's moles per liter. Most of you guys already get that because you've taken chem before and you've done labs now this year where you've used it quite a bit. So um, front loading a lot of the labs more this year is I think helping when we get to this stuff because. I don't have to teach it as much if we do it in the lab first. Like it's already, you guys kind of, learn, the labs are learning labs so that we don't have to lecture as much is really what it comes down to. Uh, it's more fun that way anyway. So, um, okay, so that's the, that equation's given to you, you don't need to memorize it. Okay, so here's an example. What is the molarity of a solution that contains 125 grams of magnesium nitrate in enough water to make a 400 milliliter solution. So remember, you're trying to get it into the molarity equation. So you've got grams, you've got milliliters, but you need to get it into moles, liters. Okay. Focus on that part first. Then the second question, you, you're, you're definitely going to see this as a short answer question on the test, something like this. Okay. Then it asks, what's the concentration of just the nitrate? And that's where stoichiometry comes in. You did this in class, but it's been, this is a long unit, so. Hence the review. It is, it's, I, I may split it, I'm sure. It's a big chunk of that. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, I like to Is spend there a, lot a of conversion of milliliters to liters on the AP? Just remember it's a thousand milliliters on the liter. Well, milli means a thousand. And milliliters are smaller, so the liters should be smaller.
think you can use Google on the AP test. You can? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's no, no, that's Why do you help me mess with You should know better than me. Sometimes I'm just really getting my hopes up and I hope it's true. Really Never get your hopes up in here. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't mean because that. I, I don't mean like your success. I mean like on stuff like that. No, yeah. Yeah. You okay. just Is crush it? us. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Was this the class that made fun of Gen Z people? Yes. Okay. I don't remember that. Um, you just brought it up. On camera. No, I don't want it's uh, no, but you're not wrong. A lot of them are sensitive. Uh, there's people in my generation. There's no place. Yeah. Now the taunts are like a lie about how tough I am. Uh, you know, nothing ever bothers me. <laughs> I do believe I have the solution on the next slide if you want to look chat. I know I do. If you're at home right now, try this one. Pause the video if you must. And then... <laughs> I'd make my own series of videos, but I just don't have the equipment. Can I get the video productions class to do it? I need a better camera. I need, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should ask for an HD camera for Christmas. Don't look. I wish I could pause the stream so that this gets edited out. Um, and it didn't restart it. What is it? Okay, so basically. Did you get like one of the higher scores on the last test? Yeah, but my first test is. You know how you're trying to find dog water? Yeah. So the kids are saying it on It was <laughs> My first unit. <laughs> Yeah, but you retook oh, it and fixed it. Forget about this part. Oh, that's just them. Oh, I just remember it back then. I was just like 16 years old. Like, you're not a, you're going to go to college, obviously, at least. Uh, so, you're going to college, right? <laughs> I will drag you to college. Yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah. Me and Zola are going to college. Who's not? What are you guys, you guys joining the army? Uh, <laughs> yeah, together we're gonna. No. Is it too late for me to join the military? Yeah. You can try, but you're gonna have like some twenty-year-old yelling in your face. I think there's an age limit. There's an age. It's like thirty-five. Really? Oh. It's like 14 years ago. Oh. Couple decades off. You, you guys want to go over the answer yet? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. It's 35 for active duty. <laughs> I guess I can't get drafted then. Something happens. All right. That's the army. That's the army. Yeah. Navy is 34. 39 for Navy Reserve. 29 for Marine Corps. Marine Corps Reserve Air Force is 39. Coast Guard? Uh, that's all me. And then Air Force Reserve 38. So I'm off by 10 years, 11 years. I'm what? Yeah, you just count. Yeah. What? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I hope somebody else protects me. Okay. Uh, so the 125 grams of magnesium nitrate, if you go to the periodic table and add up its molar mass, you should get something close to that. Um, that's going to give you the mole amount 
Where is the point four liters coming from? Uh, if you converting, uh, I'm more confused on the uh, second part too. Yes. Yeah. We're okay, get we'll get there. Yeah. So once I divide those two guys, I get 2.11 molar. Now that means the magnesium nitrate, the whole thing, is 2.11 molar. But if I separate out the, oh, am I gonna go? Uh, okay, oh, does the two? <laughs> this, this comes from the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Okay, so that's okay. So if they're asking about the magnesium, there's only one of those in there, so that matches up with the molarity of the whole thing because it's the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you've got two ions in the formula, you have to double the molarity to get. It for those ions because there's two of those in every one of the whole thing. Okay. Say it again. Say it again, but slower. slower. Okay. Let me uh, slow explain it. It's easy for one. And really, really slow down. Like, you're doing great. Right. Okay. <laughs> you're doing great, sweet. Snow crying. Okay. When you look at when you look at magnesium nitrate, let's separate it up into its ions. You've got Mg2 plus, okay, and then you have two <clears throat> nitrate ions in that thing, okay. So if the whole thing has this molarity, all of this, think of it as stoichiometry. If that's a one in front of the Mg then the Mg is going to have that molarity. It's going to match up, but that's got to be double. Because there's twice as many of them in there. So that's what we, we use the two in the, um, the equation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it really gets you, I mean. Because there's two ions. Yeah, now here's, here's where, like the question is going to be like this on the test, but a different substance. But sometimes what they might ask is, what is the molarity? They could ask you, what is the molarity of the nitrate ions? in this first step and so what you could do instead of doing this you could do this so you've got one mole of mg no3 two and if you're trying to get the moles of nitrate how many moles of nitrate are in one mole of the whole thing this thing two so if you do that that would be just the nitrate ions. And then if you divided that by the 0.4, you'd get that. Okay. So, but it's, it's the same thing, though, right? Yeah. Just, so, it's, it depends what they're asked. Like this one, they asked for the whole thing what's the molarity? <clears throat> then they asked, what is the nitrate on this, you know, the second follow up question. Okay. So, it really depends. Yeah. It, yeah. You got 4.21. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's really stoichiometry, but instead of having an equation, it's the formula you're looking at. It's it's when you have these ionic compounds, some of them have one of those and two of those. Some have, I mean, if you really want to get crazy, look at a uh, you know, aluminum nit aluminum nitrate would be really easy. That's ALN. That's one to one. Uh, fudge. Mg. <laughs> If you had something like uh, magnesium, I can't think of anything on the top of my head. Uh, somebody come up with a, uh, oh, sodium phosphate. It's Na3PO4 to the negative three charge. There you've got one phosphate and three sodiums, so it's three to one. Yeah. So if there was no two, it would be? It would be the same answer. Okay. Yeah. Do you have which charger? Uh, which you mean for uh, the square one or the circle one? Circle or square? Oh, thank you. Um. So yeah, if uh, the question being asked, it's really good. If if this formula was just MgNO3, then the answer would be the same. It'd still be two point one one. Well, because it'd be a one to one ratio, along with it being one of those. So. Here's, here's the ratios in this formula. If we're talking about one of these, which is shown, we don't usually write this, there's one of those and two of those. So anything you're doing math-wise would have to get doubled for this. Is that me or you guys? Uh, I can't tell what's going on here. Yeah.
<laughs> my stomach. Wait, so yeah. Wait, what? Was asking you like uh, the <laughs> the concentration of mg, then it'd just be one right there. Yeah, it, so if they asked for the concentration of, of mg2 plus ions, that'd be a one there because it's one of them in the formula, so it'd just be the same answer. Okay. Yeah. So I just look at the super, uh, I'm sorry, the subscripts. When it's a polyatomic, or whatever subscript you have is how many are in there. With the polyatomic ions, you got to be careful because they have more than one element. That's why I put them in parentheses. And then put the two. So you know it's two of those those guys in there, the nitrate ions. Okay. Um, by the way, just in keeping with this review thing we're going here with, would magnesium nitrate always dissolve in water? Based on the rules for solubility. Make sure you know those from yeah. There's three things that always dissolve in water. Alkali metals. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Nitrate, yeah. which is NO3 minus, and one more. Um, ammonium. Ammonium. NH4 with a plus. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that would always dissolve in water and make the ions. Okay. So, there's there's a lot. This is why I'm constantly on Thomas. I'm like, uh, you don't have a test until Tuesday, but this is all throughout the year. I'm like, are you studying your chemistry? Well, what do I study? I'm like, go back and review the notes. It's like, I think there's a disconnect in how to study sometimes. Yeah. yeah so you're saying that NO3 will always dissolve in water? NO3 minus nitrate will always dissolve in water. No matter what it's connected to. Okay. Yeah, even if, if it's with silver, it dissolves. I mean, it doesn't matter what compound it's in, it will dissolve in water. It'll never form a precipitate, ever. Yeah. Um, so it's asking for the molarity of, and the concentration of nitrate ions in but we just took the molarity for the <clears throat> magnesium nitrate. Right. That's why then the follow-up question is, well, what is it for the nitrate? And they're, they're, they're trying to find out, do you get that there's two of them in that formula, so it's going to be double the concentration. Oh, remember, concentration is a rate. It's moles <clears throat> per liter. So that's why you can get away with doubling the concentration for the nitrate ions, even though the whole thing is 2.11. When you break it down by ion type, there's two of them for every one magnesium in there. And if the concentration of the magnesium is that, then the nitrate has to be double because of the formula. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's something per something. It's moles per liter. So it doesn't matter what your sample size is, the concentration is always the same. Just like when I drink my coffee, it doesn't change flavor as I slowly drink it. It doesn't get stronger. As I drink it, it stays the same strength to me as I drink it because it's all mixed together. These guys are all mixed together in the container. We're just trying to figure out how much of it is nitrate and how much of it is the whole thing. Because there's two nitrates. It's got to be double. When you focus in on the nitrate, it'd have to be double because there's two of them in there. Yeah. It's, this is a confusing topic. That for, we, we covered in CAM, but last year, again, we... And even the year before, we speak through some of this stuff at the end because it's with acids and bases, and it can get, yeah. Um, so we try to we start we try to start fresh in here again in AP to make sure everybody's got it um, for that. So and there will be more of this, by the way. That's why we do it now. When we go into uh, unit four with acids and bases and that kind of stuff, this comes up again. So it's it's an introduction to it in unit three so that we can bring it back in unit four. By then you get your legs on it and you're better at it. You get better at it, yeah. Okay. Do you want to see an example from acids and bases? Yeah. Okay. Just to, well, it might, might help you see this a little bit better with another example. Um, Okay, that's sulfuric acid, which is in car batteries, H2SO4, okay? Um, this is a covalent compound that breaks up into ions when you put it in water. It's one of those borderline ionics that's not quite all ionic. It's molecules until it gets into water and that breaks up into ions, okay? So what ends up happening is you get SO4, which is the sulfate, that's got a two minus charge. We're just breaking it up into its two parts. What else do I get? Yeah, so it doesn't break up into H2 gas, it breaks up into H plus ions, but how many will it? 
Two. Yeah, two. So, so... Two H ions? Yeah. So it breaks up into that in water. And it does it almost completely, which is why we use it for car battery acid. It's a really good conductor because it breaks up in ions. You know how you broke up H2 into two H's? Yeah. Why did you break up SO2? That is an ion. That's, that's why did you guys know the polyatomic ions in honors chem and in the summer assignment here. <laughs> you really need to know your polyatomic. Not to memorize the polyatomics, but to know what the heck you're looking at when you see this. You're seeing basically three ions breaking up in the solution. When you put this stuff in water, it breaks up into these three ions. And again, it does it almost completely. So in a car battery, this is used to move the electric, electrical current from the positive, I'm sorry, from the negative to the positive terminal. Without that in there, the charge won't move through there and your car battery's dead. Okay. Isn't it just to get the charge balance. Because the charge on this is negative two, the charge on H2 is zero. So it breaks up into two positives to cancel out the two negative there. Yeah. yeah, so acids are different. They will break up like that. But what I want you to get is if the if the concentration of this uh, of this sulfuric acid was one molar total, what is the concentration of the H plus ions in there? There's two, two of them. Two. It'd be two molar. Usually, there's two H's in there, so the concentration for those is going to be double the whole thing's concentration. Yeah. Is there a for that, or is it just... It's literally just, yeah, there's two of them, so it's no, got to be doubled. Ratio. Yeah, I mean, you can, like I showed you guys earlier, if they asked for the nitrate, you could run it in a dimensional analysis setup, and we'll be doing that more with acids and bases, but for now, if you just get that it's double in there, you would be fine. Yeah, if it's triple, what do you do with the concentration? Triple it. Yeah, because there's three times as much in it than the rest of the stuff that's in there. Okay. So it's, it's really like, I mean, honestly, it's like a recipe. You should put the acid. Because, like, that's possible. Yeah, it, uh, well, it does in a way. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, there's ratios of caffeine to water in there. And the molarity of the caffeine in coffee is low, low. I mean, half of those, it'll kill you. So um, whatever, I think it's 60 milligrams in a cup of coffee of caffeine. Uh, I don't know, ca oh, caffeine's molar mass. It's like, I have the, I'm looking at the formula in the back wall and I can't even read that from here. It's, and I can't do the math in my head. Uh, but you could figure out the molarity of the caffeine in a, in a cup of coffee, just by knowing how many milligrams are in there. Okay. Uh, caffeine doesn't break up into ions, so it's just those molecules. So you don't have to worry about stuff like that. But when it breaks up into ions, they may start asking you, well, what, what is each part's concentration in there? to make up that overall. Okay. I pulled the dilution from the test, so I don't know if you want to do this or not. Okay, so this is M1V1 equals M2V2. You've done it a gazillion times, so uh, I didn't put it on. I took it off. The t it was on the test. There was a big Beer's Law problem that was like four four steps, and I yanked it and replaced it with more of the multiple choice on the uh, KMT stuff. Thanks, so we're not doing. No, it's not. I'm, don't thank me. I just uh, you've already been tested on it quite a bit in lab work. So and you're going to do it again in so you know, five. Right. Okay. So yeah. you you um, took this off for equations with KMT. This would be the yeah I put I put the KMT multiple choice questions to replace this stuff, um, and again I like last year we didn't do the lab work so Beer's law needed to be tested more thoroughly, so this year when I look at last year's test I never get the same test two years in a row not because of cheating stuff but because we did things differently this year, so if you got you got it in a lab you guys got it in that lab practical for starters there was a quiz on that. You got it in unit two on the test, and so I, I have to cut for time a lot of the, you know, 
for that. I I want to make sure I'm not overdoing it on a topic for you guys that you already have been tested on, especially when we have so much in this unit. It's not the kindness of my heart. Yeah, you know, it's none of that stuff. I just, yeah. You know. How dare you accuse me of being there? Okay. So, uh, that's never going to happen. Horrible. All right. Uh, no, I mean, I care enough to change it up if we did something a little different so that you guys don't have to pay the price for me being lazy. Uh, representations of solutions was 3.8. There wasn't much on this in the notes because there's really not much to do on it. But um, one thing you want to remember is that the orientations, meaning how they're positioned, really matters. So, you know, I get... Uh, I get some salt here, it's NaCl, remember that's, that's an ionic solid. Water comes in and water starts to pull this thing apart, okay? Why will water mix with salt? Yeah, water's extremely polar and salt is ionic, which is really polar, basically. It's like ultra polar, okay? So because of that, they will get together. Now, the question becomes, well, why do I see this happening up here versus the way it looks down here with chloride? Yeah. Why, why is sodium oriented to water differently than chloride? Yeah, so the, what, uh, what has the negative charge on it in water, the oxygen or the hydrogens? Because it's more electronegative. So... The, negative, the slightly negative oxygen will attract to the sodium, and they literally rotate themselves and point that end at the sodium to pull it out of there, okay? And then uh, when they're pulling out the chloride ion, the hydrogens get involved, and they point the, hydro, the waters will point their hydrogens toward the chloride because it's an opposite charge and pull those out. It's really opposites attract again, okay? And so water will, will, will rotate and move around so that the right end is attracted to the right ion and then slowly yank them out of the solid until you it gets so small you can't see it anymore. Sugar, the same thing happens, but sugar molecules don't get torn apart. They get torn from each other. So sugar is covalent, but they are in a crystal. So water comes in and grabs whatever positives and negatives in that polar molecule that sugar is and pulls them out. Sugar's polar, so water can pull it out of there. So it'll line up, but it's pulling molecules out. With salt, it's ionic, it's pulling ions out, okay? So sugar will dissolve as well. Honestly, salt dissolves more quickly because it's ionic. Sugar, it, you have to stir it longer and to get it to dissolve the same amount of sugar as salt mass-wise because of this. So we've really over-explained why sugar takes longer to dissolve in iced tea than, say, salt would. But why don't we put salt in iced tea? It's gross. it's gross. Yeah. If you're in a hurry, put salt. If you have to dissolve something in your iced tea, but if you want it to taste good, take the time and, and do the polar sugar. Said that with a straight face. Yeah. This iced tea is salt. My wife accidentally gave my mom salt for her coffee. She, we had these containers, and my wife forgot which one was which, and she gave my mom the one that she thought was sugar, and it was salt. My mom put it in her coffee, and... My wife felt bad. One yeah. time I was at California's kitchen. It was for Morgan's birthday when we were like 10. And we got ice cream and ate it with salt and sugar. So this was last year? This was like when we were 10. No, that's what I meant. Yeah. So uh, that was a joke about you guys being young. Okay. Good day. What's up? What's in that? What'd you get? No, I mean, is that a Taco Bell thing? Oh, no thanks. All right. Um, no, I don't like Taco Bell anymore. It's it's hurt me for it so many times. For those that have me in fourth period last year, you know I have a week. Yes. <laughs> when I ran out of the room. Uh, I got what people would call the diarrhea. Uh, that was from the breakfast sandwiches. Okay. They, uh, 
Paper chromatography. All right. Uh, paper chromatography. Remember, the more soluble the dye is, the further up it'll travel the paper. Now, in uh, the chromatography, you, you guys did a very standard chromatography. We we had you guys run in the black ink up the paper, and this would be an example of green ink going up the paper. Okay. How do I know it's green? Yeah, it broke, it broke up into blue and yellow, right? You guys get that in like elementary school. So we start off, we started off here. Water goes up the paper. Now, which of those two is more polar? Yeah, because it went up with the water further. The yellow was not as polar, so it didn't want to go as far as far with the water. Okay. So the more polar the more attracted basically, because water is like really polar. So the more attracted the ink is to it, the more like water it is. So they have close to the same polarity. If that ink goes all the way up with the water line, then they have pretty much the same polarity. Okay. Yeah. Is there a reason the water moves up the paper? Is it just because it absorbs? Capillary action, yeah, which is the absorption of the water up. Because it's got a fibrous, the paper's like a fibrous material. Uh, water will climb up slowly through that. It makes its way up the paper, um, just like a paper towel. It's really absorption up the paper because, and it can it can defy gravity because it likes the paper so much. Yeah, just like me when I'm playing basketball, defy gravity. <laughs> Let me know. Okay, so I still gotta play Zohan tennis. So. If she destroys me. <laughs> obliterates me. I pull, uh, I fake a hamstring pull. <laughs> we play basketball, I'm going to be flopping like LeBron all over the place, crying. <laughs> hey, I'm a Lakers fan, but it's flops, okay. <laughs> they all do. Right. Let him get what he wants to get. No, we were confused. Yeah. No, he said this is trying to get Okay, distillation. Uh, to get uh, paper chromatography is one way to get liquid solutions separated out. Uh, distillation is another. Distillation works more off of the boiling point vapor pressure idea. Okay. So it, it'll take advantage of, of that difference between molecules to get it to do its thing. So um, remember that the higher the vapor pressure, the uh, lower the boiling point, and the lower the forces of attraction, the IMF. Okay. Um, if it's got a low vapor pressure, then you've got higher forces of attraction and a higher boiling point. So the, if you can just remember one of them, the other is the opposite. Okay. And uh, water has a really low vapor pressure because it has a really high boiling point for that that substance with a molar mass of 18. Yeah? Mike just said it, but if something has high IMF, it most likely has low vapor pressure? Yeah. And vice versa? Yeah. And so, yeah, the higher the IMF, the lower the vapor pressure and the higher the boiling point. So water only weighs 18 grams per mole, which is pretty light, but because it's so polar and it has hydrogen bonding, it boils at a really high temperature and it's got a re it doesn't want to vaporize very easily. I, I get it evaporates, but if you have a swimming pool or you've seen our pool, it's slow. I mean, it's, but if we had a pool full of rubbing alcohol, that thing would be gone like 10 times faster, okay, because of its vapor pressure. I just want to vaporize off of the vapor pressure. is just, it wants to vaporize. It wants to turn to a gas. Yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't take long for that to leave. Or they put, like, when they give me a, a, when they're trying to drop blood out of me at the doctor to see if I'm still alive, they'll put an alcohol pad. And before she can even get everything set up, it's already dry. Okay. Are you testing it? Okay. Now do it with water and see what happens. Your hands are going to be wet for the next, yeah, 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I believe in you. Okay. <laughs> five hours later. Five hours later.
So if you uh, if you're at home, uh, Lefty just did a demo of, of <laughs> alcohol versus water on her hands, and it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's say we're boiling uh, water and ethanol. Which is going to leave first from the still? Yeah, ethanol. Well, we could eat ethanol is what's in the hand sanitizer, and that left her hands pretty, pretty fast. Okay, Vap has a high vapor pressure, it wants to take off. Okay, just remember high vapor pressure means it wants to leave as a gas, low vapor pressure means it wants to stay together as a liquid. Okay, um, so most substances. You know, if we're talking about a bunch of different substances, water's usually in the very low end of vapor pressure. It, it really, you know, it evaporates, obviously, but it, it takes, you know, on a hot day, it'll evaporate faster because there's more energy going into the pool. Um, on, a, on a colder day, it's, you don't have to fill the pool as often as you guys know. Okay. Um, so that's, those are some key things to remember. So when you're distilling stuff, the stuff with the highest vapor pressure will leave first, and they'll go in that order. They'll go from highest vapor pressure to lowest vapor pressure until that's the only thing left in the container. Remember, they're just boiling it off and collecting it as a as a liquid. So, looking at this graph, it says, "Explain why water has a higher boiling point than ethyl alcohol." That's the drinking alcohol that's in hand sanitizer. Don't drink it. That's context. What will happen if you drink it? It is drinking alcohol, and it is at 71%. <laughs> Some of those are 70 but What's yours? What percentage? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> someone get the puppy? I don't know yet. Oh, well, she, we won't know ever, probably, unless we go to the pound. Yeah. Is yours the first one? This one? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I use your answer as the answer. Yeah. Go back to the answer that we can write it down. <laughs> so, uh... Some random student now. <laughs> you just look. You know, it's after hours. Well, it's after hours. I'm really sure. All right. So I got right to go after hours. Um, it's after hours, and the camera's on. All right. So. Um, oh, that doesn't work after. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Elisa's answer is like spot on what they're looking for in an AP test. Water has the higher boiling point because it has strong hydrogen bonding and therefore, and it has a low vapor pressure because of that. Okay. So, or you could say stronger IMF. I mean, there's all way, all manner, these are all looking pretty good here. Okay. Then everybody's good. <laughs> good, good. That was correct until they deleted it. So, no. I remember, in, oh my god, I remember last year you kept saying, don't delete your responses, guys. I know they were. Yeah. It's taking longer than I thought. Sorry if you need to call your parents. Uh, yeah, that's like <laughs> Well, we're going to cut out yours once, so that'll save us some slides. Uh, I should get a few. We have less than 10 minutes. Good. And even then, it's the beer is going to cut out. Well, there's a lot in this. I don't, we don't have to review you guys. I can go home right now. Oh, why do you wait for Tom? I'm going to jam a basket. Should I bench him? Bench him. Just saw your grade, you're out again. Okay. It's great. Yeah, it's like the. I feel like we would ground him for having a big yard. Really? Uh, 
I mean, I'm, I'm like, if, like, if a kid, it's like he has me on reminder right there, but then he, he feels, I don't know, like he feels bad taking advantage of, I don't know, so. You should just tell him yeah. It's a, it's a, it's been here having him in my class, but, uh, Oh, Nobody else teaches AP camps, this kind of stuff. Oh. Yes. Um, I'm not there with this person. <laughs> but, uh, so, aerobotics told me that I don't know those some students like fall the AP. Yeah. They added in the school of six. That I think is messing with you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. How about this other kid in high school who's also good with this idea that I think he's got a, they got like a four or even a five on the test. Another yeah. Isaac? Well, like a, yeah. Also on the So Duarte Villa got a five on AP Chem and a four on AP Lit. Yeah. Uh, my camera. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So <laughs> I mean, it's not a competition, but sibling rivalry. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah, you got a big one going on. Okay. A big sibling rivalry. Rivalry. Abolito. Okay. All right, guys, on this, uh, this is, all of this is in the notes, but, um, just real quick, you do need to know what different amounts of energy will do to substances, okay? So remember, microwave uh, is rotational type movement. So if I run microwaves into water, water molecules rotate, okay? That gets them hot, that heats up your food, okay? Uh, infrared... Infrared is heat. So if I, let's say you've got atoms in a metal and I add heat to it, if it's, if the heat's added on this side, it bumps into this one and it keeps sending it through the metal. And that's why metals are good conductors because those, those particles are vibrating against each other more easily because the electrons are loose and they can do that. They don't have the electrons holding them in place. Okay. And then uh, visible in UV. That's the third one. Uh, that's where you're getting electrons jumping levels, falling back down, giving off photons of light. Okay, so when you get visible light hitting stuff like a piece of metal, like these faucets, you're seeing the electrons jumping and falling back down and reflects back to your eyes. Okay, you turn the lights off, they're not shiny anymore. So that begs the question, what do metals look like in the dark? They don't. Yeah. And I, when I was, I've thought about that sometimes and I can't sleep. Uh, like an absence of light, they're not shiny anymore. Yeah, what are the, I mean, I literally pulled this off the test. Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Shouldn't have told you. All right. Um, all right. So, guys, if uh, if you look at this, follow me on this one so you, you don't miss it. It is uh, something like this is on the test. Obviously, I don't know if it's the same electron configuration, but this question is multiple choice. Yeah, it shouldn't have to if you listen right now. Okay, so. This is what element? <laughs> Nitrogen. Good. Adam. How many electrons are there? Seven. So it means it has seven protons, which must be 
You guys want to know the atomic number up there is the number of protons. Okay, all right, good, okay. I'm just making sure. All right, now, notice this one. That electron that was there jumped to the second level. How do we get electrons to jump levels? Well, which of those three would do it? UV. Okay. So it's not going to be this guy because that just gets it vibrating. It's not going to do anything with the electrons. Yeah, that'll rotate nitrogens. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the same. Okay. Um, yeah, I wrote a joke today for the first time ever. What element is the coldest? Beryllium. I, I came up with that. I wrote it down. It's right here. Yeah. And then, yeah. That was the best one. I'm going to make the meme uh, on my phone tonight. You could have done better. Why do you hate it? Wow. Yeah, why? Okay, so. Uh, hey, Lexi's okay. That's still here. Okay. So. Thank you, Peyton. See, Peyton doesn't think I'm bossy. So. Peyton, Peyton's a very agreeable person and very nice. Just like me. Okay, so. You don't need that. That's just bashy, Peyton. Oh! She takes my bossiness as motivation towards others. Almost done. We just got to get a couple of math ones in for this stuff. Which one gives off the uh, highest frequency? Purple. Purple. Oh, yeah. Now, it does say which wavelength. So out of those, which one would it be? 410. Okay. So uh, the 410 is in nanometers. That is the wavelength in nanometers. And remember, red has longer wavelengths. As you, get, as you go this way, they get shorter and shorter until you hit violet. Now, this is backwards from the spectrum I showed you guys because usually when you're doing this type of spectroscopy, because it's running through the prism, it gets flipped. So it looks backwards. But just look at the wavelengths. Higher, the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Okay. So that, that's going to work the same way no matter which way the thing is oriented. Okay. Can you repeat that? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, wavelength and frequency are inverse. So if one goes so up, the other one goes down. Wavelength? Just think inverse. Yeah. Also, it's in the nodes. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Okay, so... Uh, photoelectric effect, we, just, uh, we have this in a, the calculation you'll have to do on the test, uh, and then well, I think we're done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, photons with a specific energy strike a metal and eject pho uh, electron, photoelectrons or electrons from its surface. So remember um, in your solar panel on your calculator or if you have one on your home or you know where, wherever you've been subjected to solar panels, uh, light comes in as photons and strikes electrons, remember, it's got to have enough energy to get it loose and get it out of there, okay, in that case. If it doesn't, does the intensity help? No. But if it does, then the intensity will help. Once it gets past the threshold, Intensity starts to help them get out of there faster and, and more energetically. So it's, uh, it, it's got to be the right frequency light, right wavelength and frequency light to get them ejected in the first place. Once they're ejected, you can crank up the brightness if it's like violet light on a solar calculator. If I just shine a really bright violet light at it, it's, it's going to have no problem operating. Okay. But I can shine the brightest red light on it with no other light in the room and it won't turn on. Yeah. What does HV stand for, energy in? Uh, HV is the uh, Planck's constant times the frequency. Yeah. So remember, E equals HV. That's what that really is saying. Yeah. I'm going to back for that. I have a question. Yeah. Is the conversion of nanometers to meters on the... No. That's it's right. 10 to the 9. Yeah, I know that, but like I don't remember that, so I would ask. <laughs> Nano means 9 minutes. Yeah, that helps too. Yeah, thank oh, you. I that was 
Well, it's no. It's, I mean, it's it, it's yeah. You're right. Because uh, chemistry last year, the first thing we went through was like those years. Yeah. 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 So I have those notes, but I don't want students to see them. Burn it with your memory by tomorrow. But catch any cheat sheets. Okay, so. Well, if you have a graphing calculator, you can just pop it in there. Um, <laughs> okay, this is the last question for tonight. Okay, last question. Let me give you the info on the board here. Bro. <laughs> I just forgot Clint's constant. Uh, 6.62610 to the hold up, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Uh, uh, C 2.9910 to the 8. That one I remember. I, just, I can't remember the first digit after that. I thought it was 2. Okay. So. This is what you get on the paper tomorrow that you'll need for that, okay? So the energy is given to you. They gave you the wave, or I'm sorry, they gave you the frequency. No, they didn't. They yeah. only gave us the energy. But you also... Well, you can know the other two. You have Planck's constant, so you can get the frequency. And if you know the frequency, you can get the wavelength. Let, let me tell you what you know in this. You know that that was given? You know that. You can find that with those two, uh, which means you would then know that, and that is given to you. So you're trying to get to that eventually. Or, or you have that. But you don't get that on the, you only get those two, so. But it doesn't matter. I mean, Huckle. This is all in there. This is not. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to remember constants ever on the AP questions. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, are you talking about the speed of light? Yeah. What is the age? Wait, like, the age is right there. That's good. We need to find it. Isn't that little thingy? Yeah. This frequency is up. They tell you on here which one's which. It's going to save my life. It will, especially on the AP test, but tomorrow you get this too, so yeah. Even, okay, they even give you Avogadro's number on here. I know. You're like, I don't need that one. They give you things we don't need. Like how to, count, how to convert Kelvin to Celsius. Reference. Yeah. If you guys need one of those tonight while you're looking at stuff, they're in there. If you don't have one already. The burn. Okay, we'll see you later. Have a fun summer. If you burn it, it's bad. Let me
an addiction. You played sports? <laughs> <laughs> Let us still pay attention and want to do well on the test. Uh, it's up there. So I use the I use the combined equation, but again, it, it's. Do you want to see it the other way? No. No. Okay, all right. But remember, you don't get that equation on the test. You only get the other two. So. Okay. Do you guys get what I did? Yes. Yeah. Algebraically. Yes. Okay. Well, I, if that's there and that, oh, shoot. Dang it. If that's there and that's there, I could just swap on. Algebra for me was, like in high school, was algebra one and two. For, for, well, I took out the two twice. Well, I was a bit Why did you take it twice? Because uh, I wasn't doing the work and I got a C and my mom said C for a kid load of half, so I had to retake the whole thing first. Oh, I think she was not happy with anything less than a B. And even then, she wasn't happy with a B. I get yelled at me. Okay, so uh, we plug in planks, we plug in the speed of light, and this was given to us on the question. Um, that gets us into meters. It did ask for nanometers. So to do that conversion into nanometers, Uh, as uh, the dominator said, uh, one meter is 10 to the 9 nanometers. Oh, let me see how you're doing it. Can I put my... Uh... I don't want to get... What did you do that? I did the uh, okay, so like, no, no, that's fine. So I put in a uh, plank. Second. Oh, it's the it's second plank. So here's planks. I do second to the E. Huh? That means. Okay. Oh, you didn't see here. And last year. Okay. Then times 2.98. Then I would divide. And I've got 4.2. Yeah, I'm just going to try to get it. I'm just going to Okay, so like say the like why doesn't it put it in scientific? Oh it depends on say I just don't know. I have a source that gives them all the Yeah, it's it's worth it. I don't know Are you are you gonna take higher in math? I want to be a And that's a Casio thing, so then I put negative 34 times 2.4. Okay, so you guys. So, on, if you're not going to go graphing right away, the ca there's a Casio that has a quadratic in it, so it's actually pretty good. Um, you know, on Wednesday, I'll throw up some some possibilities on calculators for you guys. Oh, that are one at best. Yeah. 
I know. Because I'm, I'm actually shopping for one too, and I got to figure out what I want to do. Oh, here. Oh, here. Uh, uh, you get this? You can buy it for Oh, So let's see. Put it in the next. You want to see that example? Yeah. Okay. So, on the you do the first one? Uh, you, 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 you do the second one? So, I think I got it. So, I think I got it. So, I So, I think I got it. So, I think I Okay, so if you want to program it, okay, we get back to you on that. I'm on this one or the one that I have to figure out. Let me get at it. If my TI-84, the old one, is that a Wait, how many? Just like, what's that? Okay. You can take the second that's really good if he's in a he's in a he's in sure. Still in. Oh, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll post it to classroom and remind, but it's not. Okay. Yeah, what's up? Literally.